6.3 Sine and Cosine Rules in Scaling and Triangles This is part of my Ultimate Revision Guide for Further Maths GCSE. This is part of the Geometry section. If you want to go back to the Index of Geometry, click on this button here. Um, any exam questions I've done on geometry that's to do with sine and cosine rules, I shall put into this bar down here so you can practice on those. Okay, so the difference between this in Further Maths than in uh, Standard Maths GCSE IMFs is mainly going to be um, maybe slightly slightly trickier, unusual type versions. Um, we've got a sort of third third question I'm going to look at here as an example will be like that. First two are pretty standard though, um, and the other thing is you may these may be on non-calculated papers where you have to use the knowledge of standard triangles like the 30, 60, 90 or the 45, 45, 90, so that you know the sine and cosine of those standard values. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with that, then maybe you should look at section 6.8 first, where it go, will go through the standard um, sine and cosine and tan values that you need to be aware of for non-calculated work. Okay, well, let's, let's run, run through this. this. This is question one, and then I'm going to go through uh, two more. This is question two and question three. If you want to stop the video on one of these or all three and then work through them and then I'll then come back and go through it with me afterwards. That would be ideal. Um, but if not, let's just work through what we got. So the first question, a pretty standard uh, triangle question. You've got um, two sides, one angle, and you're trying to work out the angle Q, uh, Q to P to R. As we're trying to work out this angle. Okay, so uh, first thing we need to be aware of are the rules, which are given to you on the further maths, and these are the rules that um, that are given to you on the formula sheet. And you've got to be able to pick which of the sine or the cosine rule you're going to use in any particular question. So the way to do that is to to think about what's involved in what you're doing. So this one has two sides and two angles. Two sides and two angles is going to be the sine rule because you've got two sides and two angles involved. If we have three sides and one angle, either what we've, are the sides missing or the angles missing, then it's, that would be the cosine rule because the cosine rule you have to have the three sides and one angle. In the sine rule, you've got two sides and two angles. Now, so it's going to be the sine rule. There's a slight trick to this one because um, the opposite side to the angle is not given. Now you might think, well, I need to work that out. You could use the cosine rule to work that out, but that would be overdoing it a little bit. All you really need to do is to work out this angle, which you can work out. And once you've got those two angles, you can work out the third angle um, by making them add up to 180. When you're doing, so what I'm going to do is going to start with this angle here. When you're doing these sort of sine cosine rule questions, where you've got standard ABC a, triangle labeled like this, and then it's not labelled like that. Just ignore the labels they give you and just label it up how you want to label it up. So I'm going to label this the angle A and this side little a. And we'll label this B and this side little b. So now I can use this formula. Also, this formula has, has another variation where you have the angles on top. So if you have sine A over A equals sine B over B, you, very, you don't need this section here, but it, it just it's just telling you that it's true that all these uh, ratio is going to be the same. So when you're trying to find the angle, it's easier to put um, the angle on top. So just do the rule upside down. So you've got sine A over A equals sine B over B, which is the same. So uh, sine A over A, so A is going to be 15, equals sine B over B, which is 6.2. In fact, B is actually 24, so I, don't, I can just put that straight in. And once you've picked a rule in trigonometry, that usually gives you a mark if you pick the right rule. So the sine of the angle A is going to be 15 times this. And then the uh, the answer, I'm going to need to do the sine to the minus 1 of that answer. Okay, so let's bring the calculator up and let's put those values in and see what we get. So I want to do this, 15 times sine 24 all over 2.6, uh, 6.2. 
and that gives us that value there. And then to find a, I want to do the sine to the minus one of that 0 0.984, whatever. Leave it in your calculator. Just do shift sine answer, and you get the answer, which is 79.74986, and so on. Um, if you're going to round stuff, you can round angles, you can round to the nearest whole degree, um, but in standard rounding in GCSE maths or this sort of um, GCSE and A level maths, it's three significant figures. So that's what we need to do for that. But I want to keep the answer in because that's not actually the answer I want. I want this angle here. So um, QPR is going to be 180 minus 24 minus the 79.74. So 180 minus 24 minus the answer is going to be 76.25 or 76.3. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty standard one. Slight twist on it. The, on further maths, you're not going to get a, just a straightforward work out the missing angle when it's when it's just put the numbers into the rule. You're going to have to do a little bit of manipulation to get to the answer. Okay, let's have a look at question two. Okay, so let's uh, bring in our rules again. So this question, we need to work out this angle here, A. Um, B, A, C, so that's the angle at A here. Okay, now I think on the last question I said you wouldn't get a standard question, but this looks pretty standard. So you're trying to work out the angle A, you're given the opposite sides and the two, these two sides are the same. So you could use the cosine rule to find the angle. Um, you could even split this into down the middle because it's a nice oscillation triangle and use um, right angle triangle trigonometry to solve this. Um, but we'll, might, might as well stick with the cosine rule since you're actually given the formula for the angle in the cosine rule. So cos A equals B squared, which is 12 squared, plus 12 squared minus 16 squared, all over 2 times 12 times 12. And we need the calculator. Let's bring it in for the last question. Okay, so. 12 squared plus 12 squared, so that's 144, Oop. plus 144, minus 16 squared, which is 256, over 2 times 12 times 12, I'm going to get 1 ninth, and therefore cos the minus 1 of 1 ninth, which is the answer, is 83. So we want a is equal to cos the minus one one ninth, which is eighty three point six two zero six two nine seven nine, which is approximately eighty three point eighty three point six degrees. Okay, so that was that was a pretty standard question. Let's have a look at the last one. Okay, so this one's going to be using um, uh, the, the the exact values of so, uh, 45 and 60 degrees for sine and cosine, probably. So, um, so let's bring in the rules again. So we want the exact value for x, y. Um, we have two angles, two sides, sides are opposite the angles, we're going to use a sine rule, so let's, let's just call this A and little a, a and little a, B and little b, and put in the values for that. So A is Y divided by sine A, which is 45, equals B, which is X, divided by sine B, which is 60. And we want x divided by y, so we need to divide the y and then times by the sine 60. So we end up with sine 60 over sine 45 
e equals x divided by y. So I've divided the y onto this side because it's times y on the top. In fact, with, with fractions like this, you can just exchange the diagonals and that won't affect your equation. So this is my this is my exact value, but this is not a value, this is sine 60 and sine 45. Now you're supposed to know the values for sine 60 and sine 45. So the ones you're supposed to know are for 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90, so sine and cosine. Um, the sine starts off at 0 and it gets bigger, so it goes um, 0, 0 0.5, um, then you've got root 2 upon 2, or 1 over root 2, then you've got root 3 upon 2, and then you've got 1. The cosine is coming back the other way, you start with 1 and you've got root 3 upon 2, root 2 upon 2, a half, and 0. So you only need to know them for 1, and then you just switch them around, the other way around, gives you the other one because of the symmetry of the curves, which I will talk more about in section 6.8. Um, so we want the sine of 60, sine of 60 is root 3 upon 2. And sine of 45 is root 2 upon 2. So we're dividing fractions, so that's the same as root 3 upon 2 times by this one upside down, which is 2 over root 2. So the 2's are going to cancel to leave us with root 3 upon root 2. Um, that could be written as root of 3 over 2. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think this, this is the better answer, root 3 over 2. That one probably okay as well. Okay, so that's using stand standard um, values that you're supposed to be aware of.